second. Let's see if we can get back out and back in. Um, okay. Let's see. Alright, are we there? Are we live yet? Okay. Hmm. We should be able to see, see it live. Nothing yet. Okay, well. <laughs> that is interesting. Well, someone's on. Sandy's watching. Hello, Sandy. Thank you for joining us. Now Angela's watching. Excellent. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm waving to you, Angela. I see you. I'm so glad you found us. Um, sometimes it's a little tricky on Facebook. You know, they don't always let you know who's watching and, um, and that, that there's something going on. So I'm really glad you're joining us. Um, sorry, I had to put my laptop over there. And, <coughs> pardon me. So, um, Angela, make sure when, um, since you are our hostess, and we are so excited to all be with you. Please make sure that when people come in, you welcome them. Um, while I'm talking, it's gonna be a lot easier. I can't really type and cook at the same time. So I'm gonna leave that to you. I'm gonna introduce my sidekick. This is Hobbs, my dog, and he always um, likes to, in, uh, Hobbs, you're not really showing up on the camera here. Come on over here and say hello, sit, good boy. He always likes to help me, and he gets a biscuit, which is why, why he always comes in. He's definitely um, trained that way. <laughs> okay, there you go, buddy. Good boy. He's old, but sweet. He's about, um, he's, almost, he's almost 13. Pretty old guy, but very sweet. If you're a dog lover, he's a Labrador Retriever. They're just the best. <laughs> Um, sweet and kind and um, loving and happy all the time, which is a really nice way for everyone to be, right? <laughs> okay, so tonight we are uh, gathering together and we are um, doing a uh, New Year Better You theme. And so what is the New Year all about? Most people are making resolutions. They want to eat healthier, get healthier, lose weight, gain weight, exercise more, whatever. To, feel free to tell me what your New Year's resolutions are. Mine, no sugar, no added sugar. I'm eating plenty of fruit, but no added sugar if I can help it. Um, but I found out there were that, um, that they sneak sugar in in a lot of different places, especially like in canned goods, so you really have to read those labels. Um, so tonight we're going to make a, um, a really delicious soup. It's red lentils with spinach. And these are the red lentils. They are, um, they're very small, uh, they're, they're lentils. I mean, they're the little lentils. But these are kind of um, more tender than your average lentil. And so they start out red or orange, really. And then by the time they're done cooking, they're really a yellow color. So just so you know, that is normal for them to change colors. So what I've done with them is I have a, a cup of them and I rinse them in this amazing strainer that we just got, um, new Pampered Chef tool. And so that's waiting for us to put in the soup. You like lentils? Oh, good. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that because that's what we're having. Unfortunately, you are thousands of miles away uh, in California and I am in Chicago area, so you're not gonna be able to taste it, but you can make this yourself with your quick cooker. So if you have a, an electronic pressure cooker or I'm gonna show you the Pampered Chef version, it's called the quick cooker, then you can make this really easily and quickly. So let's get cooking. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple things. First, we need a lot of carrots, and I had the, it called for five, three large carrots, and believe me, these are big carrots, so I actually only used one and a half, because I think it's a plenty. This is a three cup prep bowl, and it's full, and I still have to show you, I still have to cut one more part to show you. Oh, Chicago, oh yes, it does have the best pizza you've ever had. Did you go to Uno's, or um, do you like the deep dish pizza, Sandy? That is the best. <laughs> You're right, it is the best. Um, I also sliced up very thinly, also just like the carrots, some celery, two celery, um, celery, what are those called? Celery sticks. No, there's another name for them. Hold on, I'll grab my recipe. Um, celery stock. 
stocks. That's it, stocks. Hello, Liz. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. I'm waving to you guys if I can. Um, you were a... Uh, Oh, it was a double layer. Oh, like stuffed? Did you have a stuffed one? Ooh. We have Lou Malnati's here. Those are really good pizzas too. And they're also thin, thick crust. Um, so anyways, let's get cooking because we have a lot to do. Um, I'm going to show you my, my simple slicer, which is what I used to cut these very thin slices of carrots. And the thin slice is just going to help them cook quicker. Um, so let's see um, if I can turn down. I'm going to show you my simple slicer. I've already used it, so it's got some, some stuff on it already. Um, it's got a blade, and you'll notice, it, and it has a lock for it because this is basically a mandolin, so it can be pretty um, dangerous if you put your hand over it. But right now, the blade is locked, so it's safe. And then it can open to thinner, thicker, and thickest. And you can see the difference. I'm gonna close it up and you can watch that close up. And I hope you can see that. And um, so I'm just gonna use it on one, which is the thinnest. And then it has the safety feature is the food holder. And this will slide up and down, but it also has this with has little prongs on it and you stick the, um, the food in the prongs and then it goes in here and it slides up and down. So let's see how this works and then we can get this going. Okay. Oh yes, very nice. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, so I'm just going to put the, I just have one piece of carrot left over because I figured you didn't want to see me doing the whole thing. <laughs> and then I also use my, um, I'm gonna turn this so it's a little easier for you to see. I like to use my grooved cutting board because then I can have the feet of these stick in there and it's not going to slide on me. It's just like another thing, a little bit of a safety feature for me. And so all I'm going to do is just make sure that I, oh, I'm pampered, not perfect, you guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. Can you see the them coming out? I hope so. The slice is coming out. Maybe if I move back this way. Oh yeah, they're coming out. See how quick? And I think that's done. Yep, it's done. And that's the rest of them. And here they are. All nicely sliced. Okay, so that is my quick slice. Get that in the, and I used it on the carrots and also on the celery. What do you guys think of that? Your sister would like a two, the two cup measuring cup. Oh yeah. Like these, the prep bowls, they have a lid on them. They're fantastic. Anything that makes life easier and dinner faster. So that is our motto, or at least my motto. I like to help you get dinner on the table faster and a little bit more fun so that you can spend more time around the table with your family and friends. And to me, that's the best of all worlds. Because I like to entertain, but I don't like to spend all day in the kitchen trying to, trying to get everything ready. Although, I do like, I do kind of like it. <laughs> I do like being there. Um, hello, Anne-Marie, thank you for, Anna-Marie, excuse me. Thank you for watching and joining us. Okay, we also need to chop up an onion so I have a tip about onions. See this end, the root end? That's what makes you cry. Did you know that? Type in if you knew that, because I, it took me a while to figure that out. So what I suggest we do is we cut a cone out of the end. And I'm gonna turn this down so you can see what I mean. And that, where this is where the gas gets released. It's like their natural defense. So if you cut in at an angle and go around, like, and it will come out looking like a cone. Try not to cut that. Okay. There we go. Make sure I got it. There we go. See how it's cone shaped? And whoops, a little root there. So 
in theory, I should not be crying, okay? <laughs> if I start crying, you'll know I did it wrong. <laughs> you didn't know. And that is a good thing to know. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Hold on. And I need my other knife. Oh, here we go. So if you don't have good knives in your kitchen, everybody needs at least two good knives. You need a small-ish knife, could be a paring knife, could be a utility knife, you need a big knife. So this is an eight inch chef's knife. This is forged German steel. It has a full tang, which means that the blade and the handle are all in one material and then they just add a comfort handle around it. But this is like, yeah, I'm not crying. <laughs> um, so I love this, I really love this knife. I love that it has our logo on it for you to put your forefinger on one side and your thumb on the other side and then you wrap your hand around your the rest of your fingers around it so it's like an extension of your arm so that's a little tip about how to hold the knife a big knife like this i mean a little knife you wouldn't have to but you don't have a lot of control if you put your thumb your finger up here i see a lot of people cutting like that and it, it really you think that it gives you control but it doesn't you can lose control of the knife easily but if you're gripping it this way and then you've got your hand uh, um, your fingers around it it's not going to slip as easily so let's cut this and I'm going to use my food chopper to let me know if you have first of all let's let's play a little game are you a pampered chef pro or are you a newbie to pampered chef and we're just going to cut these um, in a little bit smaller pieces so we can get them in the food chopper and the food chopper has this blade that you press on it and it twirls and it does a great job chopping see how it moves okay so we're gonna do that I usually take like it with a big uh, big one like this I'll do like two pieces at a time and it doesn't take very long we don't need it chopped really finely but of course you can do finely a little bit on the noisy side sorry but it won't take very long okay now I am getting a little bit of the gas I'm feeling it oh well but I guess I'm hurting the <laughs> I guess I'm hurting the poor um, onion <laughs> anyway so that is our food chopper. You, uh, it also comes with a silicone lid and you actually can um, use that to chop in. And it's perfect quarter cup, great for nuts, great for um, basically any vegetables. I just wouldn't do raw meat with it. Okay, so let's get the quick cooker up here so that we can uh, start using it. Hold on one second, I'm just gonna turn this so that I've got some room here. Got a, a, a short thing here. Okay, let's do this. So here's my quick cooker. Uh, hard day's work. Oh, newbie returning. Oh. You're a newbie, okay. All right, Sandy, we're gonna teach you all about Pampered Chef. I'm gonna turn this down and show you my quick cooker. So this is an electronic pressure cooker. I love this thing. <laughs> okay, first of all, let me, oh, it's not ready to go in. It's got a bunch of different um, options for you. So we can do, we can sear, which is what we're gonna start with. You can steam, slow cook, proof bread. You can do chicken and poultry, beef and pork, fish and seafood, soup and stock, you can do uh, white rice, brown rice, whole grains, beans, stew and chili, and dessert. Makes great desserts. <laughs> Safety features. The, the steam release uh, button is here, but the steam release is over here, and it goes that way. So that you can't her, uh, get burned with it. You have to make sure that the icons are lined up. There's a little little steam icon on here and on here. You want them to be in the same plane. 
And like I said, the steam releases that way. There's also a red button um, in the lid that pops up when it's under pressure. You've got this seal in here, it's silicone. You wanna make sure that it's, it's laid in there and that's fine. And then, oh, there's, this is some of the accessories and I'll show the accessories later. Let's wait on that. And it's got a nice stainless steel pot on the inside. This can go in the dishwasher. Everything else, uh, and so can the silicone um, rings, but everything else you should do by wash by hand. And they're really easy to wash. So let's get it started because we need to sear and we need about a tablespoon. I, I've got a little measure all cup here, which I love. Um, and I'll show you in a second. We need a tablespoon. I'm almost out of olive oil. Oh my goodness. I need to get some more. Um, so we'll put that in there and we're gonna ju just turn it to sear and we're gonna press start and we want that to heat up and while it's heating up i <laughs> i'm going to let i'm going to show you just this is the measure all cup this is the petite one we have three different sizes and the nice thing about them is um you can use it for liquid measure but also where it really excels is for solids so think think, think about things like honey or peanut butter, anything that's really sticky that you need to put in a recipe, you can open this up, put your sticky stuff in here, and then you just press like a syringe almost, and it squishes it out, and it comes out. It's really an amazing tool, and I use it for, um, I use it for um, my, Basically, there, uh, there's a one cup, there's a two cup, and then there's this little petite one. And I use them all the time. I mean, literally all the time in my kitchen. So, I just wanna let you know about that. Okay, so we need something to move things around. Here's some, uh, this is the teak spatula. We have a teak spoon, and there's another piece, and I can't remember what it is, though. But these are so beautiful, and they have been holding up pretty well, too. Okay, so we're waiting for this to heat up. And while we're waiting, let me just tell you a little bit more about our recipe. So we're going to add the carrots, the celery, and the onion, and we're gonna do some garlic so also. So let me show you the garlic press. Um, if you don't have a good garlic press, please consider this because this is an amazing garlic press. So you don't have to peel the garlic, you just put it in and squeeze and it, and it comes out. The, it comes with a little cleaning tool in case the garlic doesn't come out easily after you've uh, done it, because it depends on how old the garlic is. I always say the garlic gods are with you or not. Um, and then you can use it to scrape it off, or it's got little prongs in it. And then actually the newer model is like, looks like a little Barbie brush. And you just press the prongs into the holes and it, it pushes out the remaining garlic press. So really easy. Okay, I can tell that this is heating up, so let's get things in there. Hold on one second. We've got our um, carrots. Let me double check and make sure, yep, the carrots. Yep, let's heat it up nicely. And we've got the celery going in. Let's turn this down a little bit so you can see. And I love how the two cup prepple stacks in the three cup prepple, and I've also got a one cup one. Here's the um, onion. Going in. Okay. All right, got that all done. Knife for later. Let's just swish this around a little bit. Looks good. What do you think, guys? Are you giving my Facebook page? Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. And garlic. So with garlic, you want to make sure when you're buying a head of garlic 
that the outside cover is tight and white, like underwear, tidy whitey. Um, and we only need a couple of uh, garlics, garlic cloves. So I'm gonna just pop a couple out here. And I'm just gonna put it in to the um, garlic press. And you should see it come out, hopefully. Can you see it coming out? There we go. Ooh, does a good job. And I've got that off. And ooh, the garlic gods were with me. It came out all on its own. Yay. And there was a little bit left that didn't get into the pan, so we'll put it in. Okay. That's one. And toss that out now. And I got the second one. And we're going to actually need this for our salad dressing. You can also use the little end of this to scrape off the garlic. And there we go. Okay. Oh, and it came off again. Whoop! And I dropped it on the floor. Whoop! I'm a messy cook, I must admit. All right. My husband does all the dishes, though. That's good. Except when I do my shows out. <laughs> and I'm usually cleaning up myself. I clean as I go. Do you guys clean as you go? Or do you wait till the end and it's like stacked up with dishes? I'm curious. Curious minds want to know. Okay, let's see what our recipe says. Stirring frequently. Cook uncovered for about four minutes. The nice thing about the, um, the quick cooker on sear, it starts at 20 minutes. And then it counts down, so you can kind of, if you, if you know when you put it in, like I was about two minutes heating up the oil and then I just put the um, vegetables in, so that's, um, so that was at 18 minutes, so I need another minute or so of cooking. And then we're gonna start adding things and that'll be good. So we're gonna add stock, we've got vegetable stock. Now normally I make my own, I just keep like, the peels from the carrots and the and the um, ends of the onions and all kinds of other you know odds and ends of the vegetables, but I I didn't get a chance to make any, so we're gonna add the stock. It's a good looking stock. Um, it's four cups, and one of these is four cups, so it's going in there. Can you see, can you guys see okay? So now it's getting. Okay, so it's gonna have to heat up a little bit, but that's okay, because we want it to heat up a little bit so that it goes under pressure faster. Okay, so that's going in there. And then what else have we got to add? We need to add the lentils. Remember, I, I um, rinsed them in this amazing um, strainer. This is like, I love how conical it is, and it's so much bigger. I have one that's only like it holds a cup just barely and then things are falling off of it when you're rinsing so this one is amazing and I use this with the cooking blender because I make you know you make different things like milk and alt milks and stuff that you need to um, that you need to uh, get um, you know strained so it's good so I'm gonna put this in I got the there we go. Oh, <laughs> they dried practically. I guess I rinsed it off a while ago. Um, so can you see it? It's like a little cone in there. <laughs> so we'll have to break that up a little bit. I'm sure the, the stock, yeah, it's breaking up really easily now. And then we're gonna add some cumin and it takes a, a teaspoon of cumin. Do you say cumin or cumin? I don't know. I should look that up. I think you can do it either way. I hear, I've heard it both. Okay, so I've got the adjustable measuring spoon here. You cook and wash. I'll, um, okay, just you. Good for you. Let's see, I'm looking at your, oh, I'm glad you think it looks yummy. Okay, so here's the um, adjustable measuring spoons. These are fantastic for this. The, um, it comes in a set of two. <laughs> And the um, smallest on the small one is an eighth of a teaspoon. And on the big one, it's uh, a teaspoon goes up to a tablespoon. So this one goes up to a teaspoon. The other, the bigger one goes up to a tablespoon. So we need a teaspoon of cumin. 
cumin or cumin, depending on how you like to say it. And I like the way it fits in the jar too. So there we go. A little more, a little less. This is cooking, not baking. We don't have to be quite as exact. Thank goodness. Okay. And I love the smell of it. Oh, man. And then a bay leaf. Bay leaf adds a lot. Hey, you guys in California, you may have like fresh bay leaves, huh? We don't get those out here. I wonder how they got this in the jar since it's squishing coming out of the jar. What do you think? That's crazy. <laughs> Unless they put them in, maybe they put them in when they're still green and they dry them in the jar. I wonder. Do you guys know? I don't know. But that one broke on the way out because it was bigger than the opening. Do you know what I'm saying? That's weird. Okay, inquiring minds want to know. I'm getting distracted. Sorry. Okay, and then we need a half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. So I do have the salt here. Uh, you know, I always keep salt on the countertop. Do you guys keep salt on the countertop? And I just do it like this. But the pepper, I like to use fresh pepper, so I just kind of grind it. These are fantastic grinder grinders. Comes in a set of two. I love it. And I just kind of eyeball it. And if it's not enough, I add more. You need these? These are amazing. <laughs> oh, I'll show you, wait a second. Comes with a little stand too. I've got my pink um, Himalayan sea salt and um, Pamper Chef does the, does the multi, multi peppercorns. I don't know exactly what they're called, but peppercorns with, that are not just black. <laughs> there's white ones, I think once in a while there's a red one in there or a pink one in there. They're pretty, I will say that. Okay. So we've got, uh, what else needs to go in here? Mm -hmm. Salt and pepper. Okay, so now we're just going to get these so that we're gonna turn it off and then we're gonna turn it to a different setting to our soup stock setting for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna actually turn, oh, the other really nice, um, the other really nice thing is you can turn the, you can use the handle uh, handles on the this uh, quick cooker are at the base of the pot. Okay, let me just show you. Right down here on either side, and you just lift up, and you don't have to worry about, like some people, the top, use the top, and that's not safe because the top can come undone, you know, so that's not safe. All right, so let me turn this a little bit more so I can show you. So now we're going to stop it. We're gonna turn it to soup stock setting, which is over here. And I don't know if you can see it. Okay, and that normally is 30 minutes, but it says to do it for, adjust the time to 10 minutes. So we press time. You may not be able to see this because it's kind of hard. And then on the other side is a button to turn it down. So you go to 10. Would help if I put the lid on though, wouldn't it? Me. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait. Wrong way. <laughs> Doesn't that make a cute sound? Listen. I call it R2D2. <laughs> okay. So we're going to let it go. We're waiting for this button to pop up. So that may take a minute, a few minutes to come to pressure. And then the timer will start counting down from 10. And then it'll beep at me and tell me that it's done. And when it's done, then we're going to add some um, coconut milk. So let me show you how we open up the, the coconut milk. Hold on, I'm just gonna move these over here because we're gonna need them for the salad. Hang on. Move this a little bit out of the way. All right, and then I'm gonna turn Hello, Rita. Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad you're here. So let me show you, let me show you this amazing can opener. I know can opener, big deal, right? This is actually a really cool thing because it opens the can around the edge of the, um, see Sandy's comment. Okay. I will look at Sandy's comment in a minute. Around the edge 
of the of the um, can and it's it doesn't um, cut you they call it the smooth edge can opener you take you put the can opener on top of the can right up to this round thing like this and then you start turning so I'm gonna turn the I need to turn the camera down because I need two hands for this so you turn it up to the edge put it up to the edge it's on the top and then when you turn it it grabs see how it grabs it and then you can turn it and it's good for lefties also because our founder was a lefty and she was always upset when when she couldn't use certain um, tools because they weren't appropriate they weren't she couldn't get the leverage on them that she needed because she was a lefty so a lot of our tools are lefty friendly so they can go both ways and that's what this one is so if you were a lefty and you'd be turning the other way I'm a righty but I actually turn with my left hand which is weird um, okay so I've, <laughs> I've probably done enough then you just twist so see how it's just hanging there um, then you just twist it the other way and it comes off now here's the fun part there's a little um, let's see if I can show you See these two little things? It's like a bird beak, and there's a lever on the other side that opens and closes, that closes it. So you want to put the edge of the can right there, so that, and then pull up. So can you see how I'm putting it on there? Uh, hmm. Hard to see, hard to show. Okay, like this. And then you pull up, and then it comes off. So this is, this is um, coconut milk, and you know it's very thick. So I'm actually gonna get do this so that it doesn't get all over the place. And I did shake it before I before we started or earlier, so that's good. And we're gonna need a half a cup of that, and I'm just gonna get that ready so that I'm not fussing with it when we want to do it. And this is my my Easy Read measuring cup. I love these, comes in a set of three. I love these because you can actually read the measurements from the, from the top. You don't have to hold it on the side and look at it. So that makes it really nice. It's like a penguin beak. Yes, yes, like a penguin beak. Okay, now I'm gonna um, see someone had a... You got uh, measure. Um, so I'm just gonna read through some of your comments. You got measuring spoons so much easier in small storage space. Absolutely. And Sandy had something. You cookie wash. I cookie washes. Me too. That's what I've got. The same thing, um, Angela. <laughs> um, hello, hello, Anne. And Cindy. Uh, it takes up less room on the stove. Wow, never need a stove. <laughs> yes, yes, that's absolutely right. You'll never need a stove. Um, okay, I can't stay for long, but hope to watch. Okay, great. Um, okay, welcome. I think I know, I think I've seen everything. I'm not sure. But if I miss something, just type it in again because sometimes I miss things. Okay, let's make a salad. So I have this very cool, I'm gonna actually move you over with me. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, here we go. Okay, well done. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Welcome to this side of my kitchen. Okay, so I have this really cool tool and hold on, it's called I always have to remind myself what this is called. It's called the salad cutting bowl set. Okay, so this is very cool because if you um, if you take your your salad to, if you just take your lunch to work, this would be a great tool for you because you can pack it the night before, but it's not sliced. So you slice it when you get to work. So it's got a lid. Okay, then it's got inside a place for uh, your utensils. And it's got a place, hello Michelle, thanks for joining. It's got a place for other things you might wanna add to your salad, let's say, or a piece of bread. And then this little holder is for your salad dressing. 
and it fits in there very nicely. And um, then when you open it, this side is for cutting and it has this funky thing. You can actually rinse your, um, rinse your lettuce and then stack it with all the other things inside, okay? I think this is a really super cool thing. So we're just gonna stack it and, and do and cut it and so you can see how it works. And then this will be my lunch for tomorrow. Um, so that's cool. So I have just a few things that I might put in my, um, in my lunch box, so to speak. So we've got, first we have to put the lettuce in. So I, I actually already washed my lettuce um, and I, I put it in a kitchen towel in a plastic bag in the refrigerator and it keeps it nice and crisp. I don't know if you, if you guys do that with your lettuce, but that's what I like to do. So I'm just gonna stack it. Let me just turn this down so you can see. I think you can see now, yeah. So um, I'm just gonna stack it in there. Oops, this one's got a little bit of icky stuff. Sometimes it doesn't want, you know, you just gotta go with it. <laughs> and I'm just putting a few pieces in because I, like I like lettuce, but I like to have other things in there too. So maybe one more piece, okay. And then I'm gonna stack it with some other things. So I've got some, let's see, I've got some um, zucchini. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of that and stick it in there. Maybe two pieces. I don't need all of that. That's a lot of zucchini. And oh, I, and I have some some uh, carrot left over from those other um, from the other carrots for, the, for that we used for the soup. So I'm gonna put those in. And let's see what else. Um, oh, I have these lovely looking um, radishes. And I just want to cut off the ends because. I don't want those. What's this? And I'll stick those in. And the nice thing is we're going to use this big knife and we're going to cut it and it should be just perfect. And then I have a couple of mushrooms. I did learn that mushrooms, I don't know if you knew this, but you get, um, we don't, we humans don't really, I guess, digest or get the nutrients out of mushrooms unless they're cooked. I, I did not know that, but I found that out. I thought that was a really cool tip. I learned that from Dr. Oh, what's his name? Uh, not Dr. Oz, but one of the other Dr. Wiles. And Andrew Weil, I think it was. Anyways, I thought that was kind of a cool thing to know. So I'm sharing it with you. Uh, so I'm going to put a couple of those in, even though they're not cooked. Like normally I would cook them, but I wanted to show you that they cook. So, okay, so so far this is what we look like. What else? Oh, I found some... I had, uh, you know, these little baby, um, no, shallots, that's what they're called. So I figured instead of regular onions, shallots would be good. How about another uh, celery piece? So I wanna cut it so that it fits here, so maybe in pieces. Um, and then also I have a tomato and I have, hi Renee, thank you for joining us. And I have some cauliflower. So that's probably enough. Oh, and then what I want, so one of the things I do in my quick cooker is I make beans and then I freeze them. So these are black beans that I made back in June. I found them in the freezer and I figured it's probably time to eat those. So um, you love the granulated shallots. Oh, what is Penny's? Must be a food store maybe um, or a spice shop. But yeah, granulated shallots are delicious. I'm sure they really add a lot of flavor to, um... <laughs> Renee's here, let the party begin, yay. Okay, so I've got some some black beans, but I'm not gonna add them now because I don't want them to get too mushy, but that's what a nice place to keep them in here. And the other thing I have is some edamame. Um, so I thought I'd put some of those in, but again, I'll add those afterwards. And then I have a, a um, a tomato. <laughs> the tomato is going to go in there, but I'm going to cut it at least in one piece so that when I first cut it here, it's not going to explode all over everything. So I'm just going to cut it in, in half. And then let's see, I think that 
Does that seem like a good good salad to you guys? What are, what are you thinking? Hi Pam, thanks for joining. Okay, so we've got everything in there. I think you can see. And okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I just needed some affirmation. And I'm checking. Oh, and our can you guys see this? Maybe. Whoa. <laughs> I moved it. Um can you guys see that the, it popped up? I don't know, you probably can't see it. I'll show you in a minute. But the, but the little um, red thing popped up. So it is, oh, it's counting down. It's already seven minutes left. How about that? Pretty quick dinner, don't you think, guys? Okay, so we've got our salad. Let's put this back on, and then we'll start cutting. Hold on a second, I gotta make sure I can get it on there. So we're gonna turn it over and set it down. And then I will show you. Whoa, I wanna make sure that I'm not too. And so you wanna take the bowl off, obviously, cause you can't cut. And then it's just slicing. And then this thing will move it. So you might wanna slice down the middle. And maybe over here. And I can feel it going through the um, carrot. Okay. And you need a big knife because it has to be able to slice through the whole thing. Can you see how the little point is out? And that's just about right. So this will be a chopped salad when it's all done. And can you see some of the, there's still some, um, identifiable parts but when we're done it'll be all let's see if I can do it this way so you can see okay so now we've sliced through all these sides so now we just want to lift a little bit and turn it and there's like a slot that it fits in I think which you can feel and then do it again Okay, type in the comments what you think of this. Is, this. is this something you think you might use or is it too much work? <laughs> Some people think it's too much work, but you have to do it anyway, so you may as well do it all at once. It's kind of how I'm looking at it. I can see the, the tomato getting cut now. Oh, and here's some of the uh, mushroom. Okay, and now we can do it again. We can turn it up, lift up a little bit and turn it again. Okay, how about that? And oh, there we go. Oh, I have a runaway um, piece. And then, so it, once you do it like three or four times, I think you're pretty good, good to go. There's notches in there that catch catch it. And these may not be like fully chopped, like tiny pieces, because they're going to move around a little bit as they get chopped. Okay. I wish I had a cucumber. I just realized I didn't have a cucumber. That's one of my favorites. Okay. What do you think? Can you shake it between cuts? Why not? Absolutely, but it's um it's pretty well packed, so it's not gonna move around a lot. But I can try. <laughs> I can see that some of the um of the cauliflower is escaping. So let's take a look at it from this side. There you go. Looks pretty good. Now I would add some. Um, and look at how much, how small the chop got, some of it. So what I would do with this is I would also add, bring some cheese maybe to add to it, like either blue cheese or whatever your favorite cheese is, um, to add a little protein. You obviously could, could bring, you know, some chicken or some, uh, some shrimp or anything. Thank you, Sandy. It does look pretty. <laughs> um, any kind of, of, um, protein you want, um, 
And then, of course, the beans will add some protein, and so will the edamame. So, you know, I think this would be really great for... And then you just put it back in the salad bowl to carry it, okay? And then I'll put... I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my... Um, oh, it's about two minutes left. I'm gonna show you quickly how to make a dressing. You love it. Now, if you don't like this, or if you wanna do this and um, do it for a couple different days, you could do mason jars. And I, we have, and I'm gonna show you, the mason jar, make and take mason jar, which is I think is really cool. It's got a place in the lid for, a, for your salad dressing, okay? Oh, it's hard to see. Oh, there you go. So, uh, so for your salad dressing, or, you know, and you can just take off the top. Now this one also, there, if you want, you can add the little snack jar. It's like one cup, it's great. And it fits in here. So you could have your salad up to here and then you could have berries or you know something else that you wanna take, um, nuts, whatever. You can do that. So this is a, uh, I think this is a great um, idea for lunches. And some people you know, get a bunch of them and they make like five lunches for the week and all different things. Um, so, and you know, mason jar um, salads are a big thing. And oh, it comes with, oh wait, you have to see this. <laughs> I forgot. So you can also get a little holder for it that holds, your, holds a, um, a water bottle. And where's my water bottle? I just had it. Hmm. Oh, here it is. I love this, the, immersion, the um, infusion water bottle. So <laughs> if you like to chug, it has a chugging one. Oh, it's ready. Um, if, and then you'd wanna put your fruit on the bottom so that it doesn't go in because there's like a strainer in between, see? Um, but I like to use a straw and so I put the fruit on the top and it's delicious. So you can make flavored waters, all kinds of different flavors. You can do cucumber and mint, all kinds of things. So um, yeah, you like that too. I know, I know, right? There's a lot of cool things. And then this fits in here, but wait, there's more. If you like that, if you like the make and take mason jar, it comes with its own set of tools and they fit together so you can reach the bottom of the jar. Where's the jar? Oh, I put it back in here. <laughs> See, it actually reaches the bottom of the jar. And if you're something needs a spoon, you get the spoon too. Isn't that awesome? It's one of my favorite things. I don't take my lunch anymore, but <laughs> that's okay. You want the water bottle, okay. Well, you can get it. <laughs> okay, let, we're coming back over here to release the pressure and then we'll make the, we'll make the, um, then we will make the salad dressing, okay? So it's um, already at, it was 10 minutes, it beeped. And what this does is it keeps it warm. If you don't come to it right away, it keeps it warm and it counts up. So it's been, waiting for me for a minute. So there's a one on here. Okay, so it'll count up. So we're gonna release the pressure. And like I said, you have to make sure, uh, oh, I don't know if I did tell you this, but you wanna make sure it's in an open area. You do not want to release the pressure underneath a cabinet where there's a wall because the um, steam can come back at you. And that's probably the number one safety thing you have to worry about. So as long as you're in an open space, put it on a table, um, anything to, that will help you, you know, we'll just keep it out in the open. So let's watch the steam release. It's going to be a little bit loud. So, um, just here we go. Isn't that cool? <laughs> And it's slowing down. And we're gonna add, oh, I gotta get this. So you just wanna wait until it's completely done and the red button goes down. 
Um, <laughs> no, do not try this at home for a facial. No, 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 no. I mean, at this point, maybe, but when, at, when, at first, definitely not. <laughs> but it's almost ready. And, you know, that is, that is the one thing that you really do have to be careful of because steam can really be painful. <laughs> So it's almost ready, and we're waiting, just waiting for it to release um, the red button. But it's very quick. I think that's maybe a minute and a half or something like that, and it's just about done. And it's like fizzling out a little bit. When it's first coming under pressure, you may see steam coming out of the, uh, the hole where the red um, thing pops up where the indicator pops up, and that's normal. So don't worry about that. Yes, oh, what is in, oh, what's in there? Oh, you wanna know what's in there? Hi, Carol, yay, you're here. Um, you came late. Okay, this is, thank you for asking. Um, that is the um, red lentil soup, and we're gonna add spinach and um, coconut milk and we're also going to add some lime juice. Isn't that yummy? Okay, so. Okay, I want this to pop down. And it, I had to pop it down because it was stuck. There we go. Let's see what it looks like in there. Oh, it smells really good. Let me put this over here. Um, So remember I told you the red lentils are gonna turn like a kind of a yellow color and that's exactly what has happened. We've got the, um, just looking to see if I can move this a little bit closer for you. How is that guys? Um, you can't even really tell where the um, onions are. Of course you can see the um, carrots but they're very, um, they're very uh, uh, supple. And it says to take the bay leaf out, so I'm gonna do that. Okay. And we're going to be adding, let's see, carefully move there, the bay leaf. Stir in the spinach and the coconut milk. So the spinach, it's like five cups of spinach, which I think is just about this whole thing. One, I do handfuls, two, three, for, yeah, it's pretty much this whole thing. So that's fine. <laughs> we'll just put it in. You can eyeball it. And of course, you know the spinach because it, it, it will wilt very quickly. We're gonna add the, um, whoops, we're gonna add the milk, the coconut milk too. And then I want to add some of that lime juice. So who has a lime, who has a citrus press like this? This is one of my favorite tools, you, especially if you like mojitos. It's really good for that. And of course, anytime you need lime juice because limes are hard to squeeze, but you can also use it on uh, lemons and small um, uh, oranges. So whenever I have uh, to use limes, or any citrus, I like to roll it either on the counter or in my hands. Sometimes you can even put it um, in the microwave for like a minute or, not a minute, like 10 seconds, and that'll get, it just loosens it up so that you can get a little bit more juice out of it. Let me slice this. And I'll show you how I like to do it. So I turn it inside out so that the cut side is down, looks like that. And it, it essentially turns it inside out. And look at all the juice that's coming out of that. It really does a great job juicing. Turn this down a little bit more so you can see. Oh, <laughs> I just squirted everywhere. <laughs> it's always great cleaning up after I've been cooking. <laughs> So it says two tablespoons, and that usually you can get two tablespoons out of a lime. So that's about right. Okay, what did you guys think of that? Oh, I don't think I have your 
your comments. There we go. Okay. Well, let's let's hear from you. What are you thinking? So here it is. It's all mixed up. It's looking good. We're just waiting for the um, spinach to wilt a little bit, and then we can try it before cook. Okay. We will let it stand. Oh, and we need to put the cover back on. So hold on a second. Where's that cover? So we'll let that sit there and get um, covered, uh, get wilted, and we're gonna make some a quick, well, maybe I'll just stay here. We're gonna make a quick um, salad dressing. Okay, hold on a second, I need to organize it a little bit, get a little bit, some things out of the way. Oops, I missed one, oh well. Um, here we go. Okay, so, oh, and you know what? I don't need it to be plugged in anymore because it's done. All right, so I like to make a quick, fresh dressing, and the dressing, I, I wish we could all get a cup to try. I wish you could, too. That's the hardest part about being so far away. Um, okay, quick salad dressing, easy to do. You need a good olive oil and some red wine vinegar, a little bit of, can you see? Okay, olive oil. Um, hold on, this is, there we go. So about three tablespoons of olive oil. I can't tell if that's, eh, maybe a little bit less. Some red wine vinegar, and it's a three to one ratio. I've been doing this so long, so often that I don't need that much <laughs> to, I don't need to measure. A squirt of, of, um, <laughs> do you see it squirted all over me? A squirt of Dijon mustard. Oh, come on. Ah, yeah, it squirted all over me. <laughs> there we go. Oops, a big glob. Oh, well. <laughs> um, and some garlic. What did I do with the garlic? Well, I brought it over here. All right, so one garlic clove should do it, and then a little salt and pepper. There we go. And then I just use a little whisk, or you could just put the cover on and, um... oh, I forgot the salt and pepper. A little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. Okay. And there we go. Quick and easy. You love red wine vinegar, seasoned rice vinegar, all of them. Oh, yeah. By themselves, absolutely good idea. With crusty bread. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this has a little bit more um, of the mustard than I expected because it squirted out. But it's still really good. So it's a mustardy. I can add more vinegar and olive oil to it. But I can put this in that little container along with the salad. Look at how it opens up. Hold on. How cute. And take it to work. Or <laughs> later with my, with my um, salad. So what do you think of that, guys? Pretty cool. Sandy has three times about the Instapot compared to PC's pot. I'm so sorry I didn't um, see that, Sandy. So I don't have an Instapot. I cannot speak specifically to having used it. I can tell you that one of the things that we did, was so the things that we did to make it safer are a direct result of some features that were on the Instapot that people complained about. So for example, the um, the lid, um, carrying it by the lid, there were um, uh, that's why we have the handles built into the sides of it on the bottom, on the base. 
We also have double walled construction. So even though it feels warm to the touch on the outside, it, um, it won't burn you. And then the whole idea of having the um, steam release button here and the steam actually releasing away and far enough away from your hand, that also is a direct result because I believe, and I don't know if this still is this, the case, but the original one, the steam release button was right next to where you would push, right, the steam released right next to where you pushed it to release, so a lot of people got burned. So that's my understanding. I have not seen it firsthand. So what all I'm saying is, is in um, response to some of those issues, we really took um, care to make sure that it's as safe as we could make it. So that's, um, that's, those are the differences. And I'm sorry I didn't see, your, see it earlier. Um, and thank you, Angela, for letting me know. <laughs> um, uh, it is a quality product. Of course and so let me tell you that this is one of the items that are available this month to our hosts at a big discount so this is uh, you know an expensive um, tool for your kitchen um, I always like to call it a power tool even though yes it is power because it has a cord but also because it is powerful and does so many things for you in your kitchen and the fact that you can use it in to make so many different types of food really helps. Um, it also comes with an amazing cookbook that actually takes you like from the beginning, start off making eggs, making beans, making a simple chicken dish. You can take frozen chicken, put it in here, and in 20 minutes have dinner. So it kind of really um, uh, steps up the microwave. Like it's like so much better than the microwave. Um, and so, and, um, and what I was gonna say, oh yeah. So it, it gives you a way to get started. Then it has how to cook your beans and legumes and how to cook your greens and rice. You know, it, down to the type like couscous, if you have um, the pearl kind of couscous, um, you need one and a quarter cups of water, you use the whole grain setting, two minutes, and you let it, the steam release naturally. So instead of pressing the button to release it, you just let it, let it count up from the, when it's done for 10 minutes, and then the steam has released naturally. So that's what that means. And then it has like all the vegetables. Like I made a um, one pound spaghetti squash in here in 12 minutes. It was fantastic and so easy to do. And then it has um, different meat and poultry settings, and it also tells you um, how to make different recipes. So there's lots of great recipes, brown rice, root vegetable mash, bread. There's a multi-grain bread that's really tasty. That's when you use that proof setting. Um, the chicken teriyaki is, um, with rice is amazing because you make the chicken teriyaki and and the rice at the same time in the quick cooker using, I'm gonna now show you, show, um, using this little ceramic pot. And, oh, you made your first pot roast. Oh, that's good. I haven't made a pot roast in here. I've made other things. But the bread, yeah, is amazing. So here's this lovely um, ceramic pot, and it comes with a silicone lid, and the lid has two holes in it, you can see, to let the steam out or in or whatever, so, so that it doesn't blow up on you. Um, and then it also comes with this um, thing, this carrier that helps you put it inside the pot um, and get it out, because it's got handles on it. And there's other accessories that come with, that you can get for the quick cooker. In fact, I put them away, but I'm gonna grab them right now, because um, they're right here. Uh, So we've got these stackable steaming racks. These are great for multiple, like you can fit a dozen eggs on here, or you can, you can fit three of these one pot, one cup uh, prep bowls, and, they, and you can get them with the little silicone lids to go on them. Um, let's see, do you, have a, do you have the quick cooker? Oh, yeah. Carol, did you get that? I can't remember. And then stackable 
steaming racks. Hold on. These are great. Look at this. They're so cute. And these can go in a regular pot, of course. But the nice thing is you can do, you can stack them. So you can do two different things in here. Like there's a great recipe for um, an Oktoberfest with uh, you, you brown the, um, the bratwurst in the bottom on sear, and then you put them in here. And then you add t uh, potatoes and carrots in here. And there's, uh, I mean, it's like an amazing recipe. Look at this. It's a, a small but wonderful, um, oh, what do you call this pan? Oh my gosh, I can't think of what it's called right now. But it, it releases from the bottom. And then there's also a fluted cake pan. So you can make like fun, fun cakes in here. It's like, this I made cheesecake in here, fantastic. So a lot of really amazing things. Works basically the same, electric pressure cooking. Yes, yes. Do those fit the Instant Pot? They do, they do. So we, we have you covered. If you have an Instant Pot, you can still use our um, accessories. Okay, we put these here. Should we take a look at our soup? Spring form, thank you, Carol. <laughs> You know, sometimes the words escape me. Let's take a look at our soup. And then, oh, it's really, oh, it, it, the pressure is wonderful. Okay, let's take a look at the soup. Where's my ladle? Oh, oh my other ladle must be in, the, in my other bag. Okay, let's take a look. Maybe I'll put it in a bowl so you guys can see it a little bit better. And maybe I'll sit, bring some into my husband. He can have be a taste tester for us. Okay. Oh, it's in the shadow. Not good. Hold on. There we go. Can you guys see that? So you can see the carrots and the spinach, and a little bit of the um, of the uh, red lentils. Let's see what it tastes like. Okay. Gotta get a little bit of everything, right? There we go. Mmm. Oh, it is delicious. So, you know what? You can adjust the seasonings. I might add a little bit more salt. I got some salt when I was in um, Croatia over the summer. And, um, oh, it was really good. So, it is really good. Mmm. I apologize that I can't share with you. <laughs> and it's still hot. <laughs> yes, it is still hot. Yes. Um, this will stay hot for a little while. In fact, I'll probably have to put it out on my screened in porch overnight because I don't have enough room in my refrigerator for it. <laughs> but that's the nice thing about living in the Midwest when it's winter time. <laughs> All these things can just go outside <laughs> as long as you protect it from the animals. Anyways, so that's what I've got. Now, let me tell you what you get if you spend $80 or more. Hold on a second. Did you see all these, um, all these uh, mats that I've been using, these cutting mats? This is your free gift with purchase. This one, there's three different ones. This one shows you different um, measurement amounts like that are common. So like the rule of thumb is, um, one teaspoon for the tip of your tongue, of your thumb. One thumb is one to two tablespoons of cream cheese, hummus, jam. I mean, this is such a cool thing. Your palm is three ounces of bread, uh, uh, one slice of bread, full open hand. Fish, meat, poultry, and tofu is the palm of your hand that's three ounces. So if you want to measure something, if you're out to dinner or something like that and you want to control your portions, you're like, okay, I just want a palm's worth. How cool is that? So that's this particular one. Then there's ones and they're kind of dirty right now, so I can't really, well, I guess I can lift them up. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, this is the... This one was the one we were cutting uh, uh, the salad on. So this one tells you about dicing. Big, di you know, large dice, medium dice, petite dice. This is Julienne's, different sizes. 
I just think it's so cool. Um, and then the last one actually is one of my favorites because this talks about what knife to use for what purpose. So, for example, the Santoku knife is, um, is a versatile knife. It, it does dicing, slicing, and mincing. But the chef's knife does is good for big prep tasks like chopping, slicing, and dicing. And pairing is um, for delicate, detailed work, peeling fruit, removing vegetable skins. So, I mean, how cool is that? And, and truly, a, a, teeny, a small knife is for using for close work. Things that you're holding, if you're holding a fruit in your hand, you should be using a small knife because a big knife can slip and ooh, that would be dangerous, okay? But you want to be able to slice, if you wanna be able to slice and, and dice, you need a bigger knife. So I think that's cool. And that's your free gift with purchase uh, of $80 or more. Now, um, let's help our hostess out. And anybody who had a great time tonight, which I hope you did, please consider having me do this for you as well. And we can schedule a time, a party, and I've got three dates that I um, actually have opened up for you. So if, the, if one of these will be interesting to you, then you get what's inside these lovely bags. So I have, of course, the best one, is in this bag, which is January 18th. So that's Saturday. We can still do it, because we do it live, so it's easy. Um, the next date is January 20th, and the last date is January 27th. So if, these, if any of those dates work for you, great, you get what's inside, and your hostess, your current hostess gets um, something very special at your party. And once all three are done, are, are um, scheduled, then she gets something really big from me, <laughs> especially from me. Um, you're doing a party. Oh, you're doing a party because you, you um, are um, actually helping out a different hostess. You're helping out Carol. <laughs> so thank you, Renee. So don't miss out, you guys. Have your own party too um, at, because you can never have enough pampered chef <laughs> in your kitchen, right? Um, okay, so anybody who uh, decides to host, then I'm gonna give you what's inside that bag. So if you want one right now, say me, 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 and um, yay for you, Carol, and I will, um, and tell me which date you're interested in. And you know what, if, if those three dates don't work for you, that's fine, we can schedule another time. Um, I do, my live virtual parties at, whoa, I'm going later than I thought. Um, I do my live virtual parties on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, um, and I, I opened up a Saturday for, you know, in case anybody wanted that one. So let me know and I will be happy to, uh, to work with you and connect with you. Okay, I think I've talked about everything. Did you have any questions? Were there any Oh, do you want to ask me some questions? I'll give you two minutes to ask questions. If you want to ask about what it's like to be a pampered chef, I will give you extra tickets in the drawing. Right, remember, we have a prize drawing for participation and also, thank you, Angela. Um, we have a prize drawing that includes how often you participate. Um, I, you'll also find that um, in the party, after you get off the live, there'll be um, a post with a prize drawing slip for you to, it's a Google Doc that you just click into and answer the questions so that I know what you're interested in and if you liked it and you know, that kind of thing. So please fill that out, you'll get extra. <laughs> Is everything you have PC? Great question, Renee. Not everything, but it's getting close. <laughs> um, my husband keeps saying, um, what about all this stuff? Because you know, when we discontinue an item, then I don't tend to use it as often, which is really um, amazing. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've got a lot that I need to get rid of probably. Thanks to all who logged in. I appreciate you all. Oh, so nice. <laughs> yes, Renee, it's crazy. Um, so don't forget to fill out the prize drawing slip. If you order before midnight tonight, I'm gonna add a cookbook to your order. From, as a gift from me, as a thank you from me. Um, and if you can't order by tonight and you need to do it tomorrow or the next day, that's fine. But let's um, not go past 
tomorrow is Thursday, Friday. We'd like to try and close on Friday. Oh, Hobbs, you're, you're being mentioned. He's right here and he's standing by the door wanting to go out, I think, but it's almost time for his walk, so I don't wanna let him out just yet. Um, anyways, so it's been such a joy to be with you. Thank you so much. Um, anybody who has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I will go through and um, try and answer any questions that I might have missed. Hopefully I got them all now. Thank you for Angela for being um, a, a vigilant about um, helping me to <laughs> answer questions. Oh, midnight, my, oh, uh -huh, okay. Um, ooh, I guess it must be midnight your time. I guess it'd have to be midnight your time. That wouldn't be really fair, would it? But thank you for asking that. <laughs> yeah, I should be able to see um, if you've ordered before I get up in the morning. <laughs> have a wonderful evening, everybody. Um, Pacific Standard Time, exactly. Thank you so much. Is it 8 p.m. now? Oh yeah, okay. So for me, it's almost 10. <laughs> but it's been so delightful being with you. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, well, welcome to my kitchen. Thank you for being a part of this fun evening with Angela and um, how and when, okay. Um, Carol, I'll let you know about that in a few minutes. Um, you'll have to wait on that one. <laughs> it has to be a certain level before, before you get that, but I'm pretty sure we'll get there. Um, okay, so bon appetit. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening. You have more of it left than I do. So it was fun being with you. So long, everybody. Thanks. Bye.